I'll bring the wine, you bring the glasses. What a great time we'll have while the last us. I can't wait to toast with you, so call me a cab. Hi, I'm Joanne, and this is Call Me a Cab, a show about tasting wine without intimidation. On today's show, we will be trying a champagne, a Merlot, and a port, and pairing them with great foods as always. I also have a special guest, my good friend Katie Cole, who also happens to sing our theme song. So without any further ado, let's get started. This is my friend Katie. We've known each other, I don't even know the math on it. 12, 15 years? Something, yeah. so a long time. So I don't have to ask you if you're a wine person. She's a wine person. I'm a wine person. Um, do you, how long have you been a wine person? Like, do you remember the first time you had wine or when you got into wine? I would say the first time I had wine was in like a first communion kind of setting, but oh, we don't really okay. count that. Okay. Um, I mean, it count, count, it counts. But, but not it's in not like, like, it doesn't like get you like, I really want another conscious glass Conscious Yeah. That. I, I, <laughs> second grade, probably not the best choice to be making. The first time I started getting into wine was uh, with one of my best friends, Jessica, who you mm -hmm. know. She comes from Italian heritage. And my first foray into wine was White and Zinfandel. Very classy. And uh, her and her family made fun of me a lot for that. But oh, as... see, and I don't judge White Zinfandel. <laughs> I don't like it, but I don't judge yeah. it. I found something that I liked that kind of was my, my, my starter wine, got if it. you will. I think I really got into wine maybe about six years ago. I okay. was in a relationship, we did wine tasting a lot, and it just kind of helped me figure out what my profile was, my mm -hmm. flavor profile. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're gonna try is a champagne. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about champagne? I think for a while I would only drink champagne at weddings and then you would have that champagne hangover, but I really love a good bottle of, you know, for celebratory purposes. I'm a fan, I think it's 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 a lovely little treat, I think. I wonder why champagne is celebratory, because I do, I cannot find the open part on this. I think it's right, I think I just saw it. All right, I'm gonna let you. It takes a village. It takes a village, <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll do that, beauty, and then you can beauty. Okay. do the rest. So it, it is funny, because I have never been a champagne or a sparkling person. Oh look, it's got a cute Sorry. little face on the end. I never actually noticed <laughs> I never that. I never saw that. I don't generally have it at weddings except for the toast. Right. I mean, yeah, same and thing. And then I'm, it's back down because I was yeah. never really the person for it. But I do feel the celebratory part of it. It's like there's something fun about the bubbles. I think they're like I little mini the, balloons. It's or also something. like the pop. It's that the pop of when you first open that bottle and it's like, oppa, you know, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, it, think, yeah, you're right. The you sound know, of it is. is very celebratory. celebratory. This is my guard that I learned <laughs> when I was waiting tables. The other thing is um, girlfriend's mimosas. That's also to me. Oh, so and there's always, you have to clap for some reason. <laughs> you hear that sound and you feel like you have to clap. Yeah, so I think to me those are the two occasions is, is you know, a wedding or some sort of celebration and then mimosas on a Sunday, you know, with okay. brunch with Well, that's friends. definitely how Danny, uh, who's behind the camera, found out that he I was do. a champagne guy, was via mimosas. So we're about to have the Veuve Clicquot champagne from the Champagne region of France. Let's just get started. Yeah. Cheers. Slancha. Slancha. so good. It's just so, I taste apple. I've never tasted it before. It's very tart to me. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, oh, apple. I can taste it now that you've said it. I guess I should have smelled it first. I know you don't swirl it because that's I don't actually even know. To the, bubbles. the champagne piece of like champagne tasting, I actually don't know much about that. So maybe we should do that someday. When a lot of <laughs> wine professionals hmm. do it in a white wine glass because okay. it's more aromatic oh, and they can sense. smell it, fully experience the yeah. champagne. I don't want any Psalms to get mad at me, but I, the bubbles are the most important part to me <laughs> over anything else. But I think it's because I'm not generally a champagne drinker. The bubbles are fun because you can literally just stare at them and they make different, it's like clouds. They make different shapes. Oh yeah, that's totally you true. Look at the oh top. look, I have like, I have like, oh, they're gone. I go on the internet where the experts of everything live mm -hmm. and one of the suggestions for a great pairing with a champagne, smoked salmon mm. pinwheel thingy. Okay. So they look delicious. Yeah. I'm about to taste one. Yes, please. And then have a little follow up sample of my wine. So go ahead and help yourself. <laughs> Shove it in my mouth. Because I can't do a whole thing. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like a biter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> They're so tasty. Is there a cucumber in the middle of that? It's cucumber, cream cheese, capers, a little bit of lemon juice. Lovely. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a bite and then I'm going to. Okay. Good call. Lovely. Makes me want more of these. That is a nice pairing. Mm -hmm. It's like it made the wine a little bit less bitey, less yeah. tart. Less aggressive. Yeah. There you go. Don't be so aggressive. You're champagne. Chill, what are you so tight about? Yeah. Okay. That's delicious. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Through this pairing, this good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to say, after I drink, mm -hmm. I tried a sparkling white from New Mexico, mm -hmm. far more affordable than this. Mm -hmm. That was more to my taste. Yeah. This one's a little bit too, like, 
like you said, too bitey, too, too yeah. a little too tart. Too yeah, far. I mean, it is good, and that definitely brought this up a notch, which is right. one of the things I'm learning about whites. Like, I'm generally a red drinker. Right, yes. But I've realized the food pairing thing, it isn't always what they say. Like, because sometimes you just don't like the food they want to pair with. People don't have the same taste buds, right? So you and I have had many, many bottles of wine together, and many. we get into some, many, <laughs> we get into some trouble, y'all, I'm telling you. Um, we have to cut ourselves off. It's kind of fun. Yeah, we're not but... allowed to hang out on school nights. <laughs> At all. We learned our we learned our <laughs> lesson a few too many times. But I think it also comes back to that. We've had bottles of wine that we've shared that we liked. It's more to your taste, more to mine. And Jessica That's and true. I, uh, my best friend Jessica, hello. You and Jessica have similar tastes, similar mm -hmm. profiles. Whereas I like something very different. I think again, so you don't like the food that might pair with it, but you can also go into do I like the food by itself or do I like the the beverage by itself? Mm -hmm. But I may not like them both together because of the way that they combine on your yeah. taste buds. Or it elevates either one. Right. I actually do like smoked salmon and the whole lox experience. Yes, so I, I was do excited now as well. about that. Speaking of tastes, you went through something interesting with your own palate. So Absolutely. talk a little bit about that. I in twenty sixteen was diagnosed with breast cancer. That it led to about a year and a half of sixteen chemo treatments and eight uh, surgeries back to back. And I am definitely a wine person. That is something I enjoy, a nice glass of wine out with friends or just, you know, unwind with, you know, after a work day. Chemo really does a number on you. There's a lot of things that, that changed based on my experience and my journey. I had been going through some chemo. I had lost most of my hair. I was bald at the time. And I wanted just a good glass of wine. I was so looking forward to it. And nothing tasted good. It was really frustrating on my end to, to go to things that I normally would, would drink. Nothing tasted good. I didn't want anything. Did you sort of like fix it by just like, well, I have to retry a bunch of wines well, and figure I mean, out what I like? Going through that experience, I wasn't really wanting to drink a lot. I just knew that it was a phase for me. It just took a while for my body to kind of get to a new normal. I will always try different Do wines. Do they still taste a little funky or? No, no. I've, I'm a survivor of two and a half years now. Oh, and so, yeah, I know, crazy. Well, thanks for talking about that. Yeah, absolutely. I know it's like, it's kind of a serious subject, but I also, I also yeah. think it's fascinating and I also want to give people permission, like, yes, sh sh happens. Here's to survivors, pre-vivers, and all of you. anybody who's in the middle of it, you can do it. I'm living proof. You can do well, this. Well, here's to Yay. continued Continued health. survivorship. Yes. Yeah. Mm. More champagne. The next thing we're going to have is our Merlot. It's a Luc Prelet Merlot from the Paydoc region of France. And we'll do a swirl and a sniff and all those good things. And I know so a lot of times they look at color. I don't know why. For me, color like I like legs. looking at the color and I think it's pretty. Now I've heard mixed things about legs because mm -hmm, I feel like too. legs was a thing from maybe when you said you started drinking in like 06-ish area. Yeah. And I feel like that was what they were teaching. Look at the legs. Yeah. What do the legs tell you? It's you... alcohol content. We'll see. And not my... experts. I yeah. know we've talked about this, but not experts. And I do have some wine expert and wine enthusiast friends that kind of yeah. roll their eyes when you talk about legs. If you're like, oh, it's got good legs on it. They're like, who talks about the legs? Well, a lot of people do because at some point when we learned about it, right. we learned to look at them. and Yeah, it's kind of like regurgitating facts that you learned in school. You don't know why you know them. You don't know what they necessarily pertain to, but... Cumulus clouds. I remember yes. the cumulus clouds yeah. in school I learned and I, they're my favorite, so I never needed to learn what the other ones were. <laughs> so. Nimbus. Cumulonimbus, I think that's a combination uh, Yeah, cloud. it sounds like a combo <laughs> cloud. It's like a red blend. This is almost yeah. out of the wine. Nice. Do it. There it is. I appreciate okay. you doing that without it on something. I always feel a little more sturdy. <laughs> I did. When I waited tables, I was told at some point, don't spin the bottle. Like you're supposed to, I forget how it works. It was like, don't do that on the table. I guess when I've eaten out, they don't do that on the table. So they have to, you have to build Here's that muscle. the kind muscle. of waiter I was. I wasn't all bells and whistles and fancy pants that way, but I was excellent service and you enjoyed your meal with me. We're actually going to do the, the fancy swirl and the sniff and look at the color and all that kind of stuff. Back to the legs. We don't really know a lot about the legs part, right? I think you're right. I think it has something to do with the alcohol content, but what I was Maybe told way back in the too? day, if they're evenly spaced, that means it's a balanced wine. It looks like beautiful paint. Beautiful. paint and color wise, it's yeah. like, there's it's, a, it's a deep burgundy with like a ruby red bottom definitely where it catches ruby. the light. So mm -hmm. I think like ruby as a stone looks like it would be delicious to oh, eat. Oh yeah, or <laughs> rubies and garnets. Oh, garnets. Same. Okay, yeah. it's pretty to look at. I don't know what the color's supposed to mean, so now mm -hmm. I'm going to smell it. <laughs> okay, red wines are always funny to me. <laughs> Why? Because they're always like, try to smell fruits. Here's the fruit I smell. And, and I'm going to drink this, by the way, because I love red wine. So yes. I don't even worry about this smell, no. but I smell feet. <laughs> you smell feet? Really? <laughs> 
Well, actually, Salty something. Feet. Okay, I'm smelling my perfume. When I went to do this, where I spray is right around here. Oh, and oh, so I went yeah. and I smell. I know. I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, when you said it's you're going to drink it regardless, I smelled it and was like, this smells great. I'm going to have a sip. I'm really And it's funny because when you this. say that, the word musky comes to mind. Like, because musk is like a perfume scent yeah, kind of true. thing. And so, I, so instead of saying salty feet, perhaps say I can that. switch it to musky. So musky to me would be like wet earth. It smells a little bit like meat. Really? What are you smelling? I smell salt, Not, salty feet meat. I don't smell <laughs> salty feet meat at all. I hope no one's You're watching. You're welcome, Luke That's probably I Perlet. It's French. I'm saying it probably uh, I don't smell Perlet. salty feet meat. I smell... <laughs> I'm never going to stop saying that. That's a good finding. <laughs> yeah. Salty feet meat. I don't when know. When I finally make a Merlot, I'm calling it salty feet meat. I don't know yet what I smell. Sometimes what you smell is so exciting and then what you taste is completely opposite. And I feel like that's very true of red. Oh, like my, with yeah. whites, it's kind of... It's like so I my, smell pear, it tastes like pear. Right. I smell lime, it tastes like lime. Right. Red, it's like it smells switch. like a dog. I'm gonna love it. Yeah, like, yes. Again, jammy, love jammy in terms of red. She likes the bottom of the earth, bottom of the shoe, like <laughs> funky. What some would say would be like the terroir. And so terroir, just to give a quick explanation of what I understand terroir to be is, it's basically all the elements surrounding where it's growing. So right. from the soil to if it rained that year, Minerality. to how hot it was, mm -hmm. to everything that could be affected by where it was. Right. Ground. Right. Some people are down with terroir and some people are like, terroir is a bunch of crap. I don't know. We're going to have to taste okay. this one now that we've smelled it and it smells like... Times. What is it smelling? Salty, Salty feet, feet meat. meat. It's lighter than I anticipated. It's definitely being. lighter. It doesn't taste like feet. No. Much. Have you tasted feet before? Hey. We were all young ones. <laughs> this is way lighter than I anticipated it being, it first is, and foremost. I will still go with salty though. Like I still really? feel a saltiness the minerality? or a, yeah, like, some, something minerally, okay. something a little bit just like on the tongue. It's really light. The finish is really light. Uh -huh. I don't love super tannic wines. It, it just messes and with me. And tannics is the drying thing. Yeah, like, like, I can't. But, and but I'm yeah. totally down with that, but I don't hate it when it's not there. I love it when it is there, but I don't hate it. This is actually very, I have it's very you know, drinkable. Very drinkable. Okay, yeah. so we've got three kinds of cheese here, a Gruyere, Manchego and Monterey Jack, which is a pretty okay. standard. Yeah. I don't think about Monterey Jack with my like cheese and charcuterie fancy pants, hmm. but I've learned that if you just tear cheese, it looks fancier. It does. I'm gonna start with the Gruyere. Okay, I'm gonna do the Manchego. Okay. I'm gonna do that little, little guy. This is delicious. How's is this? This is a tannic cheese. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but also smells like salty feet. Oh yeah, that's nice. I'm down. That's good. Totally down with this. Mm-hmm. Okay, now mm. I want to try the manchego. Do it. Now you like manchego. I don't know if I've ever had it. I love manchego. It's a touch salty, the cheese, but not too salty. Like, but what you know, I harm can be too salty. Right. But what I like is that the saltiness of the manchego, to me, punches up the the berry and the it the does jammy. because I was just to be like it just made it more ta like tart. Yeah, which it is just, less it, for me and more for you. Right. Right. I'll be curious to see what you think after the yeah. Gruyere. Mm. It, I love the cheese by itself, but I don't, you don't like it I don't that. like what it did to the wine. I liked what the Gruyere did to the wine. What do you think of the Gruyere taste? I mean, I love the taste. I love Gruyere. Gruyere. I, mean, okay. I love cheese, so <laughs> yes. The Gruyere I do love. Mm -mm. Because it does, so what you're tasting in your mouth now is what I like. <laughs> yeah, correct. I'm going to try the Monterey Jack too. I love the creaminess of the Gruyere, but I don't feel like for me it worked. My palate doesn't work mm -hmm. with that. The, the Manchego so far has been the best. This tastes totally different even with these cheeses. The flavor of the cheese has its own palate. And what it does is it punches up something, kind of like if you add a sauce to like a piece of meat, you'll taste both of them together, so how they marry. As you're describing it, I'm a painter, and so I think of it in terms of color and mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. If you add a color, it changes things. If you take away a color, it mm -hmm. changes things. So I feel like it's just adding a color <laughs> to my mouth. That makes sense. I definitely liked the Gruyere. Mm -hmm with this the best. Years ago, when I was waiting tables, there was a wine merchant that came in and was talking to us. We were drinking a Pinot Noir. He was like, have a, a suck off of a lemon and then mm. drink the Pinot Noir. Worst taste in my mouth ever. He did it to prove a point. He goes, uh -huh. now take a piece of blue cheese, eat that, then drink the same exact wine. Suddenly the best wine I've ever had. Okay. I sold several bottles of it. It was Byron Pinot Noir. But yeah. when people were intimidated to try wines, sometimes you just want somebody to point you in a direction and go, I like this. So to my server friends out there, go ahead and make a recommendation. Just make your recommendation. And I think that's going to the intimidation piece. 
what was so interesting for me is actually listening to my tongue and my palate. Mm -hmm. What do I like? That's what matters. I'm the one buying the wine. I'm the one who's going to drink it. Still, even as much as I am a proponent of don't be intimidated, right? I still get intimidated. Don't be afraid to say, you know what? I don't actually like this. Don't be afraid to say, can I have a little taste and just make sure whether it's an $8 glass or a $20 glass, you have the right to spend your money on something that you actually yeah. enjoy. I know. And it's weird. It's like, it's like the blind faith yeah. thing of, with wine. Like for some reason, it's so elusive. Why is it like that? Don't be afraid at all. Don't be afraid. Just taste the wine don't be and scared. then enjoy it. Don't be yeah. scared. Don't be scared. Oh no, I don't know how we open this one. So it's going to be combination wine key and then I know it's got like the poppy top kind of thing. The wine that we're on is from Portugal, from the Douro region, which I'm saying super American-y because my Portuguese accent is Question. For not, yeah. <laughs> now this is dessert wine. Now, are you a dessert wine person? Yeah, actually, I have uh, several bottles of port at home. Really? Yeah. That do you have I, this one? I do not, but I think I've had this one before. When I bartended, we had ports. This was one of them. Actually, the two I'm featuring on the show were ones we had because I'd heard of them, which is part of wine shopping. You buy stuff because right. you've heard of it. Yeah. And I, whenever I would taste them, I'm like, mm, no, not for me. Right. But so this I'm sort of more intentionally tasting them. Right. So we're about to taste the Graham's Six Grapes Port. I'm gonna smell it. I don't think you have to do the swirly thing on this. This smells dirty. It does, yeah, this does not smell at all like the last port we had, which was very sweet smelling. I don't know. It just basically smells like wine that I left open. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Well, it tastes a lot better though mm. than wine I left open. This actually is delightful. That's so good. It's like a little sweet, but it's not it's like little, sugar. It's and it's like, got a little tart. Yeah. And it's a little velvety. I think I think the sweet and tart is a good, it's like the, the, the residue around a berry pie. Yes, but it's okay. like there's a minerality. This there's is, a little bit yeah, of a minerality yeah. with the sweetness. It's like it's got more balls and than a, little a sweet smoky. drink. Yeah. There's a little smoke to me on the back end. Oh, like if you smoke. cooked fruit. It's got more balls? It's got more balls. Like, you know when you drink, like, I'm it's not, not a, a wussy wine. I'm not a sweets drink person, no. so if it's sweet, I'm generally not on board. It, it is sweet, uh -huh. but it's sweet with balls. <laughs> balls. Sweet balls. Salty feet and sweet balls. So, Yay. this is yeah, my there's palate. A, there's a, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> there definitely, it doesn't dissipate quickly. It's a little bit, it's No, and heavier, it's warm. It's warm like a whiskey. It's a warm, like I yeah. Have a little, mm, exactly. Roommate. This hands down is winning the port game of the two that I've tried. So this is really good. Yeah. This Very is definitely like a, like a, okay. Yeah, it, this is like <laughs> end of the night, everything. Yeah. You've had a lot of laughter oh, for holiday. Now I'm like, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is for sure. This is actually chill AF, I will yeah, say, because yeah. that's that's not bad. So the experts on the internet said we should pair this with mm -hmm. a dark okay. chocolate, and this is strawberries and blueberries compote. I'm gonna have to break that. That's way too big a piece for me to just. I'll share it with you. How about that? Good job. There we go. Well done. This is my little spoon from when I was a baby. Cute. That you know now I have a reason to use. Let's give this a whirl. That's delicious right there. Even if the wine isn't good after this, it was worth it for that. Hmm. I'm not sure. You didn't do any berry, did you? I'm doing I'm doing both. I'm gonna do a little berry on the chocolate now. I feel like the chocolate brings out the more like Ooh. tart version of this. Okay, first of all, yeah. That is good. Yeah. I'm really curious what you think. Your nails look amazing. Thank you. I actually feel like I like the combination of the, the berry on the chocolate. chocolate with the wine as opposed to just the chocolate with the wine. That's yes, why I did that I first. didn't like just the chocolate with the wine. No, I like the port, this port by itself. Yes. I don't like it actually paired with anything. Paired with anything. I think I agree. I think this is delicious. Yes. And we'll figure out a way to make that go in our belly it's anyway. But I yeah. do like this as the thought of when I'm at the end of a meal and I would never get dessert. I right. never get dessert when I'm out at a restaurant because restaurant portions are huge. Right, typically. And I'm not a huge sweet person. So generally in life, I just want a bite right. or a tiny right. bit of sweet. And this is that bite or that this tiny bit of sweet. And these, like, these are, are these authentic pork glasses or are they these just small are glasses? These are Danny's mom's small glasses, but they're Some, perfect for Yeah, it. they are perfect. And sometimes you'll see pork being poured in like a smaller, um, like almost a like a- Like a wine glass. A, no, even oh, smaller that kind than that. that goes, like a little yeah, bell. it's like a little trumpet or like a very curvy woman curvies in. Um, hey, again, it's just that two or three sips. So if they call a man like a tall drink of water, can they call us like a short glass of port? I am so going <laughs> to steal that on my, on my dating profiles. I'm a short glass of port. I'm short, I'm curvy, and I'm sweet. And I might oh, have a little bite for you. You'll feel warm and fuzzy after. <laughs>
Okay, so I was gonna ask you, of all the wines, which one you would revisit, but I think we've answered it. Yeah, I would definitely go with this one. Luc Perlet Merlot. Yes, Luc Perlet, yes. Luc Perlet. I feel like it's Perlet, it's French. I honestly am trying to learn French. Je n'ai pas parlé français, je suis américain, tu parles anglais? God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> this has been really fun. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Yay. Cheers. We're back, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>